Okay, let's discuss another super bizarre discovery when it comes to galaxies and supermassive black holes. But before we talk about why this discovery is bizarre, I actually wanted to start with something we've discussed just a few weeks ago. We've briefly discussed this galaxy, the Cosmic Owl. And in that video, I've talked about how this is a really strange galactic arrangement of two ring galaxies next to each other, basically forming something that resembles an owl's face, which is naturally why it's now referred to as the Cosmic Owl. But then, to my surprise, just a few weeks later, we'll literally get another one, the second bizarre double ring galaxy that once again kind of resembles an owl, although in this case it's actually referred to as the Infinity Galaxy, because it does seem to resemble the Infinity Sign just a little bit more. And though by itself, finding two such galaxies in such a short time is already kind of unusual and somewhat bizarre, especially because we don't actually know of any other galaxies resembling these shapes, something else quite shocking was discovered inside that second galaxy that we're going to be discussing today. And so let's delve into this remarkable discovery that offers us a unique glimpse into one of the universe's most persistent mysteries, the formation of supermassive black holes. Black holes with masses in hundreds of thousands or even millions and sometimes billions of solar masses, whose origins are still unknown to us, but that in this case, based on this discovery, might provide us with one very important clue. Because it turns out, right in the middle, right between these galaxies, there seems to be a supermassive black hole, even though nobody expected a black hole to be here, and at first it was kind of difficult to explain what it's doing here. And so, since the origin of these enormous objects puzzled astrophysicists for decades, these new observations from the James Webb potentially provide us with some critical clues. And all of this is based on this new research by Peter Van Dokum from Yale University and Gabriel Bremer from University of Copenhagen. This is based on the analysis of James Webb Cosmos Web Survey, dedicated to understanding how galaxies evolved through cosmic history, that was basically hiding this somewhat strange galaxy that nobody has seen before. And naturally, as always, here the galaxy was discovered by accident. And so let's talk about the galaxy first before we discuss the mysteries. As I mentioned, this is referred to as the Infinity Galaxy. And just like in the previous example, this is a collision between two spiral galaxies, with two distinct rings of stars, and between these two galaxies there is a lot of glowing hydrogen that's been mostly stripped of electrons and now appears green in some of these images. You can actually see it the best in the image in the top right. And so here, based on the observations of gas interaction and the figure 8 morphology, the best explanation seems to be a nearly head-on collision of two disk galaxies, whose rotation axis was parallel to the direction of motion. And as a result, this impact caused the disk stars to be swept up, very likely forming expanding rings around the surviving bulges and producing these somewhat bizarre shapes. And based on a lot of observations and a lot of simulations, astronomers have discovered quite a lot of individual examples of this effect, and even modeled this using n-body simulations to basically create somewhat similar structures and somewhat similar formations. Although in this case, instead of just one galaxy getting this, it looks like it happened to both. And so the infinity shape itself is not difficult to explain. But the most remarkable aspect of this galaxy seems to be nestled right between the galactic cores. Because here we find a very bizarre cloud of ionized hydrogen that sort of does not make a lot of sense. And actually, strangely enough, the cosmic owl seemed to contain something very similar, but in this case it was explained in a slightly different manner. You can learn about the explanation and this galaxy in that older video in the description. And while it turns out, inside of this huge cloud of gas, there seems to be a supermassive black hole. Here this was almost definitively confirmed by conducting X-ray and radio observations, basically revealing an enormous powerful spot, producing powerful radio and X-ray emissions, something we actually do expect from a black hole. And that by itself is of course very unusual, because we usually find these black holes inside nuclei of massive galaxies, or essentially in their centers. And for both of these galaxies, they do seem to still contain their black holes in the center. And because this black hole seems to be an exceptionally strong radio source, with a brightness comparable to some of the most powerful supermassive black holes in the local universe, here this was a really strange discovery. I would even call it a shocking discovery. Especially because the X-ray observations also showed extremely strong X-ray emissions comparable to distant quasars. 
And so where exactly did this come from and what exactly is it doing here? Well, obviously one of the first assumptions would be, okay, maybe when these galaxies collided, either one or possibly both black holes from the galaxies merged together, forming this enormous giant. But as I mentioned, it does actually look like both galaxies still contain something in their own centers, and so their central black holes could not have made this giant. Moreover, based on an extremely steep spectral index, according to the scientists in this paper, this particular black hole seems to be maybe only about 10,000 to 100,000 years old. In other words, it appears to be just a baby supermassive black hole. Although naturally here, this is just based on the very powerful emissions coming from the center. And so black hole's position and its power were already strange enough. But here, more importantly, even its radial velocity seems to align perfectly with the surrounding gas. In other words, the motion of this black hole does not seem to match either one of the galaxies, but seems to match the gas where it's currently located, suggesting it basically formed right here, right in the middle. It did not come from somewhere else, it does not seem to be a part of some kind of a other third galaxy, it really seems to have formed right in the center, which would make this a remarkable discovery. It would mean that this black hole basically formed right as the galaxies collided, from essentially a massive amount of gas colliding in the center. And here the gas surrounding the black hole contains a lot of very wide frequencies, implying that there are very few stars associated with this gas, and instead it seems to be just gas and just dust. And this would be very different from a typical active galactic nucleus in the center of the galaxy, which often often does contain a lot of gas, a lot of dust, but also quite a lot of stars. Mostly because all host galaxies with central black holes usually contain a lot of stars in the center, making a lot of these observations just a little bit mysterious. But here it's also important to discuss how we actually believe supermassive black holes seem to form. Now this is obviously based on theories and propositions, mostly because we've never really seen one being made in real time. But there are two main models. The light seed model proposes that black holes usually start with small remnants, very likely from different stars, and then grow gradually over cosmic times by merging with other black holes and by growing larger and larger and larger in a somewhat linear way. And though this may explain some black holes, this proposition struggles to explain the existence of extremely massive or technically ultra-massive black holes, sometimes in billions of solar masses. Now that's because there's just not enough time in the universe to form something so big. Alternatively, we have what's known as the heavy seed model, or sometimes referred to as the direct collapse model. And here the proposition is that some black holes very likely formed very fast when a lot of gas and a lot of dust collapsed suddenly and directly, basically by passing star formation and supernova, and instead just becoming a black hole right away. But for this rapid collapse to occur, the gas needs to remain hot and stable, preventing it from forming stars. And this of course requires intense ultraviolet radiation and very low metallicity. Conditions that we think might have only existed in the early universe. But this particular explanation only makes sense with that model as well. Because here, this also seems to be the result of a direct collapse. The recent interaction between these two gas-rich but also metal-rich galaxies very likely produced intense shock waves that then suddenly compressed a lot of gas between the galactic nuclei, creating very turbulent high-pressure conditions, which then led to the formation of the first black hole seed. And in this specific formation channel, it is really the turbulence and the thermal pressure, and not the absence of complex elements, that seems to have prevented the gas from fragmenting into stars. And so here, all of this turbulence and all of this immense pressure essentially formed this enormous black hole. Now obviously exactly how this happened is currently unknown, but it seems to have happened inside of this shocked and compressed gas, or possibly inside some kind of an overdense cloud, or maybe even some kind of a filament. And right now the estimates suggest that it probably started happening 50 million years ago, leading to the formation of a black hole with a mass of about 300,000 solar masses, but that was also constantly growing for the last 50 million years. Currently it's approximately 1 million solar masses. And so it's really this shock-driven collapse that seems to provide the most coherent explanation explaining the black hole's unusual location and of course its velocity. And if this is actually confirmed, this will be a monumental discovery for astrophysics, or at least for scientists studying supermassive black holes, or trying to understand the evolution of galaxies. Mostly because this event has never been observed before, 
And this is literally the first time ever we see such a young supermassive black hole formed in such a bizarre way. And at the same time, this also confirms that these direct collapse black holes, or the idea behind the direct collapse theory, may not be confined to the early universe and can also happen in certain conditions in much older galaxies. You just have to find an extreme dynamic environment filled with a lot of dense, turbulent gas. And so in this case, this infinity galaxy provides us with a very important direct evidence and direct proof. And though this obviously challenges the conventional theories about where and how these supermassive black holes seem to form, it also at the same time provides a lot of explanations for so many different mysteries. For example, the famous M87 black hole, which is over 6 billion solar masses in mass, would not be explainable otherwise. But at the same time, this galactic system also presents us with something we've never seen before. And that's because each of these individual galaxies also contains a massive black hole. As a matter of fact, each of them is potentially billion solar masses in mass, all potentially interacting in the future and very likely creating something somewhat bizarre. But because this is the first such discovery and because this is the first paper on this, Naturally, this requires further investigation and possibly alternative explanations before we can have any definitive conclusions. And so here the future work is mostly going to be focusing on simulations, mostly reproducing these bullet collisions in order to verify if supermassive black holes can indeed form under these very specific conditions, and additional observations with the James Webb, especially using spectroscopy, because here by using JWST's near spec integral field unit, we can confirm the line emitting gas between the nuclei and then even directly measure the radial velocity of the nuclei, confirming the existence of the black hole and the surrounding gas. And because this instrument can also access a lot of optical emissions of very important elements, such as for example nitrogen, certain types of hydrogen, and certain types of sulfur, this can then explain exactly what's happening and present us with even more evidence. But I guess more importantly, we now have to start looking for more of these objects especially in galaxies that are currently colliding. Because at the moment, the Infinity Galaxy represents a remarkable discovery, an extremely unique system we've never seen before, that prompts us to rethink some of the fundamental assumptions in astrophysics when it comes to black hole formation and black hole evolution. And so as we continue to gather more data, and as there are some additional simulations, we'll probably eventually get a much clearer image. But until then, that's pretty much all we have. You can check out some of the additional info in the links in the description. You can also find that older video featuring the cosmic owl galaxy there as well. But until we get something else, or until someone explains this maybe in a different way, that's pretty much it. A remarkable discovery of a direct collapse black hole possibly the first one ever seen. Thank you for watching, subscribe, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support the channel on Patreon where you can find additional videos, videos without any ads, and can DM me directly, maybe support this channel by joining the channel membership that grants you early access, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.